Good afternoon to you. Mark Seth Hurricane Track.com here. It is Friday, the 24th of June, 2022, and it's time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. Good to have you along. Let's jump right in and talk about what's happening out there. We have Invest Area 94L. Remember, we use the numbers 90 through 99, we being them, the government, the Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, and all that that implies. 90 through 99, the letter L for Atlantic and it's just a way to keep up with what's what. This is the fifth such disturbance of the season that has garnered this designation. 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, L for Atlantic. Uh, the same thing happens in the Eastern Pacific, 90 through 99, E, Westpac, 90 through 99, W, so forth and so on. And it's a way to assign resources, satellite floaters, computer models specific to the system, recon, and it's just a good way to keep order. 90 through 99, we're at 94. We'll see it again several more times before the season is over. All right, now with that out of the way, there it is, 60% chance of development. First area of concern would be the islands down here in a few days. And uh, let's not forget to, real quick, in the East Pack, in the East Pack, there we go. Uh, we do have Celia uh, holding on at about 65 miles per hour and another area of disturbed weather to the south and east of there that will not amount to anything in the days to come. So, Recon, Adam McDoom here. Yes, I've asked, is that your name? I said, yes, it is. All right. <laughs> anyway, Adam, um, it's just a heck of a last name, you have to admit. Uh, tagging me on Twitter, noting the Recon plan of the day here coming out for next week, and they look out into the future. They have to. And uh, they're planning to fly down to 9 north, 49 west, if need be. When? The 27th, around 2 p.m. Eastern Time, or 18 Zulu. Pretty far to the east, not too unusual, but there's a reason. And the reason is this could get close enough uh, to the islands over here as a pretty formidable disturbance that they want to know what's going on. They being the scientists, the researchers, the forecasters, you name it, the flight meteorologists, they'll go check it out. So we'll know a lot more on Monday if necessary. All right, what else? Well, there is a little swirl in low pressure area, tiny one, well to the south and east of Bermuda. I just wanted to point it out there. We'll see it on vorticity and in the total precipitable water product in just a moment. That's our disturbance, 94L down here. This is all intertropical convergent zone energy and moisture kind of snaking its way through, way down in the deep tropics. A lot of moisture through here for this time of year. There's another disturbance here in the Southwest Caribbean. And then there is Celia way off on the west side, or the left side of the satellite imagery, the, the animation here. And then you got this big old heat dome sitting over a good deal of the nation's midsection with troughiness off the east coast and a little impulse in the gulf. This weakness that's come through here, that could get interesting. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. It's not just this system that we're going to be watching in the coming days, hint, hint. Moving on along to the TPW, I showed this this morning. I want to show it again. And I say this morning in my uh, What's Up in the Tropics, which is a very short, like, what I'm looking at for the day ahead. And then, of course, this video goes into greater detail. And here it is. This is what I was looking at. And look at that. That's, an, that's really, look, if you know your stuff, and I generally do. I don't know everything. But I've been doing this a, a long enough time that when I see all that orange and red just rolling out across the tropical Atlantic like that, and it's only late June, that is a very, very big signal. That is a lot of moisture there that the satellite product here is picking up upon. I guess this is the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And in there is our area of interest, our Invest 94L. Also, there's that little feature right there, well to the south and east of Bermuda. A little bit of moisture with it, a little bit of thunderstorm activity, but it's small, and there's a lot of shear out ahead of it, so it's not going to have much chance to do anything and it wasn't even mentioned on the uh, Tropical Weather Outlook for what it's worth. There's that trough that came off the East Coast and a little bit of moisture. Well, a lot of moisture, just not a lot of, it's not really gathering um, in low-level vorticity terms. And I'll show you that in a minute. But a lot of available potential energy out there. That's the, the bottom line here, especially since it's only late June. That's pretty interesting to see. So the vorticity signature, there's our feature south and east of Bermuda by a good distance. And I say Bermuda, which is right there. That's just a reference point. It's not headed your way. It's not going to cause any problems for you. But there it is. It shows up as a little blip 
on the vorticity signature. That's 94L right there. This is another disturbance off to its west. Some energy here tucked down in uh, the vicinity of Colombia and Costa Rica and that area. Not much to it overall. Definitely some thunderstorms, as I showed you on the satellite animation. And that, that is Celia. Look how round that area of vorticity is, and look how far this is from that, right? In terms of how much work 94L has to do for it to look like that. It's got a ways to go. But that's what we will be watching for in the coming days. And we can see that reflected on the modeling here. So let's go ahead and go over this and deal with 94L real quick. Uh, this is the Euro, and as promised, I got the latest version here that Levi, Dr. Cowan, has put in, where you can, I guess it's every three hours or whatever, it's not the 24-hour increments, see, it's about every three hours, so it kind of matches the GFS in terms of what I can show you. So there's our impulse right there, there's the other tiny one, not much down here, there's Celia, this is a piece of energy that's heading out, and then we're going to watch some stuff over here. Lots going on. So let's move this out into time, shall we? All right, here we go. Um, so now we're at the current time. I actually went back a little bit, but whatever. So we're out at 24 hours right there. There's 24 hours. Let's go out to 48. Not much change overall. A little bit of an amplification of our system right here. Watch that right there. A nice big old area of high pressure keeping it shoved to the south here. Um, and elsewhere, just not much to track. You know, not yet. So let's keep on moving. Finally out at hour 60 and then hour 72. A little bit of an area in the Gulf of Mexico starting to show up. See it? Just a little bit there. Finally at 96 hours. A little bit more right there. Just a little bit. We'll examine this closer in a minute on the GFS. But this at day four starting to light up a little bit more. Warmer water sitting over here. A more favorable environment. Less shear than normal. Uh, lower shear than average. So that'll help play into this. And then finally out to 120 hours, which is five days out. A little bit of an impulse in the Gulf. It looks very um, innocuous here, but this is not a high resolution model. These little features can sneak in. Think about a Melda in what, 2019? Um, other systems, uh, 2007, there was Umberto. Just examples. These small systems can ramp up quickly. I'll show you a couple of tweets referencing that in just a minute. And there's what could potentially be, potentially, our next name storm. And if it does so, it would be Bonnie. Passing through the islands there. Recon will have already investigated it by this time. So we shall see. That's what it looks like going out to five days. Um, not really much reason to speculate beyond five days at this point. Because why? There's just so many possible outcomes. Uh, one thing I don't think it's going to do, though, is affect the East Coast. I will say that. Just too much ridging here over the Western Atlantic for it to turn and just come up towards the East Coast. Not in the cards. You never say never, but it certainly doesn't look like it. So what's the GFS, quote-unquote, say? Well, we can track it along kind of a, the same origin and evolution overall um, of everything here. You see how that moves through, gets its little act together down there. And I'm sure you also noticed this in the northwest gulf headed towards the upper Texas coast. There's 94L down there, the same old big high pressure area. Generally speaking, both models are very similar, but it's these little details that can, of course, change things for people on the ground. The impacts. Where do these systems develop? And there's a lot going on out there to keep up with, for sure. Um, so this is at uh, just about day five. We're just moving on up. There we go. There's day five. Uh, not quite as robust on the GFS, and it's just starting to pass through the islands. So the Euro is a little faster. The GFS, though, a little stronger with the system in the northwest gulf there. So yeah, we have a lot to watch over the next few days, that's for sure. All right, a couple of tweets here. Dylan Federico in southwest Florida mentioning the system uh, possibly in the Gulf of Mexico. Cold front and the trough associated with it dipping into the Gulf, you have to watch during hurricane season, especially with how warm the Gulf temperatures are. The GFS is definitely warming up to the idea, he says, to some weak homebrew tropical development early next week. Could bring some rain, maybe heavy at times, and maybe some coastal impacts. We'll have to watch. You know, the models are starting to pick it up, but it's not 
a large scale feature. That's important. It's not one of these big tropical waves that the models really can latch onto. These little sneaky systems, you got to really keep an eye on them, especially over that warm water, because they can ramp up really quickly. And, you know, it doesn't hurt that they're small, they can ramp up faster. And another tweet referencing it too, as Eric Webb mentions, others talking about it. In addition to 94L, we'll have to keep an eye out for potential tropical development in the Gulf. Most of the major model guidance depicting, depicting some kind of a uh, mischief there as the leftovers from prior mesoscale convective systems and the tail end of a remnant surface trough. That's a focusing mechanism, that surface trough right there gets stuck underneath a ridge. So here's some of the different models. This is the GFS. I showed you that. These are just still frames, the Canadian and uh, the Icon. I believe that's a newish, newish few years now. German model, if I'm not mistaken. And the Euro is, yeah, like, hey, I'm going to focus on 94L. <laughs> the Euro's got too much going on, I guess. Um, but we'll see. More model support. And we can see that here just real quick. Uh, it's not, you know, we won't say it's nothing. Put it that way. And look, you can see it ramping up right there. That's about, um, just about between days four and five, that system tries to come in there. And you can see, too, there's a very sharp tropical wave, 94L, moving towards the islands down there. It finally closes off. This is beyond the five-day time frame. It's about a week out. Yes, it could be somewhere in the South Central Caribbean. Plenty of time to watch and see what develops. Speaking of develop, this is concerning 30 Celsius all in the areas north of this line that I'm drawing right here. 30 Celsius. Wow. That is the warmest I've ever seen that much of the northern Gulf Coast. I'm going to be straight up with you. I can't remember that I've seen such a large area so much warmer. Um, well, this is not even an anomaly. This is your, your actual temperatures. And even right up here, right off Grand Island vicinity, 32 Celsius. I mean, whole, like even the alligators have to be like, I'm out. Pass. I'm moving. I'm heading down to Boca Chica. Or wherever. Seriously, that is insane warmth. Luckily, it's shallow and easily disturbable or disturbed by anything. You know, heavy rainfall. So maybe this weak system, if we can keep it weak, and if we can just move in and bring some needed rain, that can kind of take the edge off of this because that is ridiculous if that hangs around until the peak time of the hurricane season. Seriously. All right, speaking of peak time, nope, that's not what I wanted to show you. I want to show you that. I had a conversation a couple of days ago with Andy Hazelton. I reference him enough in my tweets, and I think he's some of his tweets are even in a few of my documentary episodes. Nevertheless, we spoke over Zoom the other day about TUT, the tropical upper tropospheric trough, in case you were wondering what that means, and how that uh, is related to climatology, the seasonal progression climatology and whatnot. It's a special edition of Hurricane U, our little university. It's a little cute thing that I got, or maybe it's not, but it's uh, educational. That's what it's for. You get it, U, like university education, and think of him as like a guest lecturer coming in to uh, expand our minds on this idea of the tut. And if you don't know much about it, it's a pretty good uh, conversation that I had. I had to kind of edit things together using Zoom, and uh, I think it worked out pretty good and hopefully you will learn something from it. I will make it public in just a couple of hours. All right, and a big thanks to our supporters on Patreon for supporting it and funding it and making it possible. Um, they, of course, get access to everything first, just so you know. I mean, they're the ones supporting it, so why not? But it is in the interest of the greater good, so we do make sure these things are available to the general public just as soon as the supporters get to see it first. It only makes sense, all right? All right. Have a great rest of your Friday. I will be doing um, the morning updates and the afternoon lengthy discussions. And yes, I said lengthy discussions. <laughs> a couple people saying in the comments that, like, why do you do two discussions? I'm like, because this is my job. But anyway, yes, I'll be back. Hey, come on, I like doing this. And if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Nevertheless, I will be around over the weekend because we've got a lot to keep up with. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you out and show you what I can and uh, hopefully get you ready for what might be heading your way, wherever that may be. All right? 
uh, again, have a good uh, rest of your Friday, a safe weekend ahead. I'll be around keeping all this um, on close watch for you. I am Mark Sutter. Thanks for watching. I'll be back starting tomorrow morning with What's Up in the Tropics.